Hey, uh, last time we've talked about really basic stuff like GLSL top and data types and now I think it's time to discuss how to get your textures into a GLSL top. If you add a new GLSL top and get into the pixel shader, you're gonna see this line that starts with a double slash. That means the line is commented and compiler just skips it without executing. So what are you gonna get if you uncomment this line? Well, you're gonna get a couple of errors. The first one is undefined variable std to the inputs and that error shows you that you've got nothing connected to your GLSL top. This variable mentioned in the error is an array, which is a data structure, like a list that holds multiple values of the same type. In this particular case, std to the inputs holds all the references to your inputs. Unlike with vectors, you can't access every individual value of an array with a letter, instead you need to use indices. GLSL arrays are zero-based, which means that the first element of an array has an index of zero, the second one is one, and so on. To get a value from an array, all you need is its name, and to put the index into these square brackets. Right now we've got nothing connected, so Touch Designer doesn't even bother to create this array. Let's fix it by connecting a noise top. As you can see, the first error is already gone, and this one tells you that you are trying to declare a variable that you've already declared. And what it means is, well, you can't have multiple variables with the same name. Let's get rid of this line and save it. And as you can see, all the errors are gone and we are just sampling this texture and outputting it to the buffer. So this texture function doesn't only take a reference to the input, but also this vec2, which is a vv.st. Those are the UV coordinates provided by Touch Designer for every single pixel and regardless of the resolution of your GLSL top or the input, they always go from 0 to 1 in both directions. If you want to see how it looks, you can just output it. Here, let's say that color.rgb equals to a vec3 constructed from this vec2 which is vuv.st and 0 for the blue channel. If you've seen my other tutorials, you should be familiar with this texture. This is just a grid of points located between 0 and 1. And you can use instancing to see how it looks. Like I've said, the resolution of the input image or its aspect ratio are not going to affect UVs. And basically that's why we use UV coordinates in computer graphics. Because you don't need to rely on an image size or whether it's a square or rectangle and what's the aspect ratio. Let's set the resolution back to something standard and get the image back. We use these vv.st values to tell the compiler where we want to sample from. So each pixel in our GLSL top goes to the input texture, finds a place by the UV coordinates and grabs whatever values are presented in that spot. So what would happen if we modify these UVs? Let's figure it out. You can just add some values to the vv.st and let's say a vac2 of 0.1 and 0. Save it, go back and you can see that half of the image is gone. In fact, we only see the right half of the image. That's because, for example, this pixel has a UV coordinate of 1 and 0. And once you add a 0.5 to 1, you get 1 and a half, which is outside of that 0 to 1 range. So by default, GLSL top assumes that there is nothing in there. But you can override that behavior. That's where input extend mode parameters come into play. We aren't gonna touch the W mode, let's just say it's meant for 3D textures and what we have here is obviously 2D. So we need to change the UV mode instead. And you can set it to repeat, mirror, hold or zero as it was by default. Well, that's cool but also kinda boring, so let's do something more sophisticated. Duplicate the noise top, set it to 32-bit flow, disable monochrome and connect it to the second input. Now we can go back to our code, get rid of this vec2 and duplicate this line. Let's also set the index to 1, meaning the second input, rename the variable to something like this and now nothing really stops us from taking a vec2 out of that vec4 and adding it to the vv.st. 
So what happens here is that you sample values from this texture and then you use the RNG channels to move the UV coordinates, which is just like what the display stop does. If your image doesn't look like what I'm seeing here, you probably need to change the UV extend mode. And again, because we only depend on the UV coordinates, these two images can have different resolution and it still works just fine. At this point you're probably thinking, well, why use GLSL for that? Well, why it's better than a standard display stuff? Because the amount of control you have here is limited only by your imagination. So let's create a separate VAC2 and call it UV and it's going to be equal to a sign of vv.sc. Now you see some kind of smearing, but it's not that pronounced, so what you can do is multiply it by 2 before taking a sign value. So let's set a point 0.5 to move the center of this smearing to the center of the texture. Finally, let's set that dis.xy but before we add it, let's multiply it by 0.1 to decrease its strength so that we could dial in the values much easier. If you wonder where do all these values come from, I'm just making them up as I go. I mean, I think it's one of the easiest way to really understand how different values and operations affect your image, just to fiddle around and see what works. Try to multiply it, add it, subtract, divide, use different math functions, get a bit experimental. I hope you've learned a thing or two about sampling from an image and UVs and how to manipulate them. Next time we're gonna build a little particle system and talk about linear algebra, so stay tuned. I wanna thank all the lovely people supporting this channel on Patreon. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.